You probably never thought you'd click a programming video with the word sexy in the title. Today, I want to talk to you guys about something I always hear that gets brought up when discussing Golang. I constantly hear that Golang is too boring, it's too simple, it's not challenging enough, it's not rust. And to that, I say... Ah, fuck. You're right. I mean, literally, the authors say it is boring. Boring is good. Boring is stable. This post is about the important work we shipped in Go 1.21 to keep Go boring. And I like to spice it up. Go is just not sexy. It's not going to be that language that's so intricate, so divine. It's just not that. You see, the whole thing of Go is that it's supposed to be simple. It's supposed to be effective. Literally, it was made because people who joined Google didn't have a finer and deeper understanding of programming using C, so they created Go. Essentially, they made a programming language because people were too dumb. I'm sorry. I use Go all the time. Am I canceled? Can we can we scratch that part? All right, so now you can see I have this main.go empty, and I'm just going to show you some kind of boring feature of Go, the simplicity of it, and really where I'm going with it. So you can do fmt.println hello world, and there you go. You have a hello world in Golang. Super easy, but nothing too crazy. This is how majority of programming language hello world look like. So let's actually do a bit of Type safety, because type safety is a huge topic when it comes to programming languages. You have languages like TypeScript that offer an advanced type safety that can go very deep and rigorous, or you have something like Go, which although it is a type safety language, it may not go into the details. And yes, I know it doesn't have enums. We know you win. All right, we're trying to get enums. All right. Okay, so I quickly created this very, very simple function that adds two numbers, A and B. And we can actually do a little, little trick. They're a little advanced Go tip for you guys for free uh, that takes two ints and returns an int. And then you can see here, this works no problem. And we can even run this function here. So go run main.go, bang, result eight. Awesome. But what happens if we replace this with three? Well, obviously we cannot use three untyped string constant as int value and argument to add numbers. Very basic standard stuff. Well, what about 3.0? Well, this works. Uh, this satisfies the constraint. 3.01 does not. Can I use 3.01 untyped float constant as int value? And that's because 3.0 will get rounded to three int. It's only when you start appending a value that the float type constraint, the inference by Go kicks in. Okay, well, how about another point of Go that everybody likes to talk about, which is the concurrency. Yes, concurrency is something very powerful in Go. It's because of how simple it is to run concurrent execution in multiple Go routines. So you can see here, I have a super simple random task function. This creates a delay, which is randomly between one and three seconds. It takes the task ID from a for loop down here in our main function, passes it down, adds it to our wait group primitive, and runs our random task in a Go routine. Because it's in a for loop, these are all going to be individual Go routines that fire off. And then we will tell our wait group to wait to make sure that all of our tasks from our for loop are done. And you can see here, if I open up my terminal and go run main.go, you can see here task 5, 1, 3, 2, 4 are starting, and they will take 3, 1, 3, 3, 3 seconds to complete. And if you run that one more time, you can see here 51342 with different seconds to complete, just showcasing the randomness or the executions of a Go routine and how powerful it can be for you to structure and run your code concurrently. And it's super simple. You really just need a few things here. You just need your primitive, your sync, wait group. You have to pass it down, add it, and put it in a Go routine. And let me just give you one more example just to drive the point of how boring and simple Go can be. So we're going to import our favorite package and FMT, we're also going to bring in net slash HTTP. And all we're going to do here is HTTP listen and serve. We're going to give it our port of 8080. We're going to put nil here. Don't worry about that. And then up here, we're going to define a function called handler. It's going to take dot w dot HTTP response writer. And it's going to take our pointer to HTTP request. It's going to return a function here. And all it's going to do is FMT dot print welcome to my non sexy go code. And all we're going to do is HTTP handler funk, give it the route and the handler function itself. And now if you do go run main.go, we spin up our server, open up a new terminal and do curl localhost 8080, go back to our unsexy go terminal and welcome to my non sexy go code. Now all three of those examples were extremely basic and very simple and maybe not share anything insightful. But that's kind of the point. Of course, you can go more advanced as more complicated ways of writing code and using go to really achieve some beautiful, intricate, highly technical, highly 
engineered things, but at the bare bone, at the reason of Go, it's not supposed to be sexy. It's not supposed to make you think of multiple different ways to achieve one thing. And another highlight of Go is the standard library. And that's also one of the driving factors, which makes Go boring, not sexy, but just so worthwhile at the same time. But if you are interested in getting started with Go and you don't know where to start, I highly recommend checking out Go Blueprint Create. It's a project we created live on my Twitch twitch.tv slash melky it's almost at a thousand github stars link in the description below but if you type in what is the name of your project boring go project you can type in what framework do you want to use let's go with the standard library and what database driver do you want to use in your go project also go with none and it says here cd boring go project and if we open this up using vs code you can see here it comes pre-baked with all the things you need to get started with your go journey with routes server logic uh a make file that's a bunch of really interesting commands for you and a readme generated for your own project to so go check it out and let us know what you think about it but all that is to say that go is not sexy because go is not supposed to be sexy yes it's boring but that is what makes go so attractive not only to the beginners but also to the advanced people but if you just want to build if you are satisfied with a type safety which makes sure your code doesn't explode on you if you want to have more control of your error handling and if you just want to spin something up not have to worry about importing every single package just to do something talking to you typescript developers then go is an incredibly attractive and dare i say sexy option to use but with all that being said you know i have to leave you off with two things first off do you use go do you like go do you think go is sexy or do you think it's just boring and two you gotta power